All right, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have been anticipating not just to only have politics on this uh, network here, uh, but to make it inclusive, that is to hear, to hear from other sectors of uh, what is happening, especially in the spiritual war. Uh, tell us yet a little bit, uh, Church of uh, uh, United Church of Israel, correct? No, <laughs> no. Israel United in Israel, Christ. Israel United in Christ. Okay. Uh, do you have other device on there? I'm not sure why I'm getting the echo coming in here. Uh, let me see if I turn my the computer down. What will happen? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, I'm hearing you. You just... Okay, I got to turn it up a little bit. Can you hear me now? I'm hearing you. Yeah, just, just, I'm getting the audio. Just, if there's any other device that you're listening to, just, you just have to turn it off so that way we can have an echo because once you speak, uh, it, you know, microphone is very sensitive. Are you there? Yes, I have only one device on my computer. Okay, let me see. I'm not sure why it's going back and forth. Um, hold on here. Okay, there's no nothing other, nothing else here. Okay, t uh, thank you so much for coming. T uh, let's have a discussion here, t and uh, we will be able t uh, to get this going here as soon as possible. T um, okay, it's good that you're here with us. Uh, let's have uh, this conversation here t uh, quickly. Israel t uh, United uh, in Christ. That's the name of the church, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay, mm -hmm. good. All right, um, before we get down to some of the issues here, uh, where, where is this church based, uh, Bishop? Uh, Mount Vernon, New York. Mount Vernon, New York. That's where headquarters is. That's where headquarters But we have about 55 other locations throughout the United States. We also have locations in Uganda, in uh, Liberia, Nigeria, uh, Kenya, Sierra Leone, and Ghana. In Ghana. Uh, uh, okay, I'm still having the echo here, and I'm quite sure our people are hearing it. But uh, do you have anything that, are you listening to the program there? Uh, only on the computer. I can only ha hear you on the computer. Hmm. Because uh, your voice keep coming in and off, it, it means something, uh, either microphone or another, some, something is there interfering with the audio for which I'm getting the echo. Uh, for those of you that are following on the Facebook field, uh, please give me a signal if you are getting the echo as well, because uh, we want to make sure that the conversation is very clear so that you, uh, your time to your pressure time uh, will be uh, 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 it will be value here. Uh, Mr. Boat, uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, Francisca, if you are listening, just uh, uh, just let us know because we are getting the echo. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so uh, basically what this church here, how long this church has been uh, around uh, in the community or to around all of those places that you are talking about? Uh, well, I established uh, Israel United in Christ, oh praise the Lord, in 2003. Uh, so our headquarters has been established since 2003. Since 2003. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the headquarters, my understanding, is in New York. Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. T uh, we have a... Uh, okay, they said no echo, but I'm not sure why that is coming to me on the side here. If, you, if it is clear, then that's perfect, and then I'm happy to hear that. Uh, very loud on my side. Okay, no echo. Okay, great. So, okay, um, I, I want to start. You are based in New York, right? We're going to come to the spiritual aspect as well. But let us talk a little bit on this uh, deadly disease that have a virus that has engulfed the world, the, uh, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, how are you doing? How is the church and how are your membership doing so far? Well, well, at first, first uh, well, like, like many first, people uh, uh, may not be aware, aware of, when, when the virus, virus first came out, first came out it, was it was only affecting uh, Caucasians. Black, Black people was not getting infected by it at all. And, and when, when the government, government realized it was not affecting Black people, because we've got to realize this disease is patented by the United States and Europe. If you go back and check the record, you can Google it, patent for 
uh, coronavirus. They have a patent since uh, 2004. Okay. And they were the ones that sent the disease to Wuhan, China. Uh, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci and gave them $3.7 million to play around with the disease or investigate it, and that's when it got out. And they knew it would get out. And like I said, it was not affecting black people at all. And when they realized it, something happened mysteriously. And all of a sudden, black people started to get it phenomenally here in America. So uh, Many black people were, were dying here in America. Uh, some of the congregation got sick, but what we did, the Lord used that to have us change our diet, our eating. Like many of the foods we eat here in America are processed foods, uh, GMOs, and we had we were forced, or oh, praise the Lord, to change our diet, eat more herbal medicines. You know, herbs are medicinal foods, and that helped us get through it. But America has stated that there will be a second wave of COVID-19 uh, come November time, around November. Remember, uh, Bill Gates also said that Africa will get hit with it exponentially. And in Africa, what, maybe what, 50 people got hit and died with it? Maybe maybe a thousand? I don't know. No more. Not, the numbers were not large at all. Mm -hmm. But what they're planning on doing, this, doing this new strain that they're putting out, is meant to hit Africa. That's what they want to do. Remember, they want to move in. They already got 33 military bases in Africa. They want to extend their military power throughout Africa and take over. Okay? And you, and you know what, Alfonso? A lot of times Christians like to separate politics from the Bible. You can't. You cannot separate it because the Bible says, when you read Revelation um, uh, 1 and 6, for example, let me look, make sure I got the right verse. Right. It says it has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So God has made us kings and priests. Our people, the people of Sierra Leone, are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Our destiny, as well as our history, has always been that of kings and priests. You cannot separate politics from the Bible. They both go hand in hand. I'll give you an example. The laws, right. world laws, government laws, these laws about thou shalt not murder, don't steal, these things are based on God's laws. So when Christians say you have to separate politics from the Bible, it's impossible. If you have any understanding, you know that all political venues are based on some biblical standpoint, especially the laws I'm making reference to, God's laws. Like, like adultery, adultery, don't commit adultery, adultery. rape, uh, not, not to, to rape. rape. These, These laws are taken from the Bible, okay? Mm -hmm. Honoring your parents, taken mm -hmm. from the Bible, okay? The, what, what holidays to separate, I mean, to keep, are taken, taken from, from the Bible. Bible. Okay. So, so when you, you hear people, people, oh, no, you gotta, you gotta you separate, separate government, government like, like in America, it's a separation of church and state. state. Okay, that's what I was coming to, Bishop, not to intercept you yet, and that's where a little bit confused my and people that are listening up there, that's why it will come in here. But I heard you also in saying that there was something mysterious that took place during this coronavirus and for which black people had, uh, started to die. Do you care to share with us uh, the mysterious what took place that led us to get to be where we are? Yes. Uh, first, let me, let me, I'd be remiss if I don't read scriptures first. Let me, uh, Go to Jeremiah 28. Let me show you. Many people call themselves preachers, right? The word preacher is the same as prophet. So to preach means to foretell. That's what a prophet does. Watch what Jeremiah 28, verse 8 says. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. So pestilence, which is disease, is prophesied in the Bible. That is the same thing that Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24. Now let me say this. Jesus Christ is a black man. He's not European. Hmm. Matthew's, <laughs> Matthew 24. That's, that's and quite I had to laugh because I know your listeners are like, what? Yeah. Matthew 24 and verse 7. Christ says, for nation shall rise against nation kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences 
and earthquakes in diverse places. So Christ also prophesied of pestilence, which is diseases. So America, in the Bible, they're called Babylon the Great. This is the most evil kingdom on the earth. They dominate the planet, okay? Like when you read about Babylon the Great and all nations would drink of the wine of her fornication, mm. all nations uh, do with business with Babylon the Great. And if you don't do business with America, they put an embargo on you or they put sanctions on you so that you cannot buy or sell, as it says in Revelation 13, verse 16 to 18. It says that whosoever would not take the mark of the beast, he could not buy or sell. They cut off many nations. I'll give an example, Sierra Leone. Mm. They give Sierra, Le Sierra Leone millions of dollars in foreign aid. That's b doing business, okay? That's what America does. And what, and, and what they do, they tell Sierra Leone, this money that we're giving you is a loan. And you got to pay it back at an exorbitant rate. That's called neo-colonialism. Okay, well, you, you will be indebted to America forever. China's trying to do it now. So what is it? What does this mean? Neo-colonialism. They give you a financial debt. It's impossible for you to pay back. But at the same time, Alfonso, they take your gold, your diamonds, your bauxite, and all of that, which equals trillions of dollars. So, I, I, I say, is by that, the way, Sarah Bills, yes, your yes, dollar is worth nothing. Is that a, It's worth zero 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 point five cent. Okay, then, Bishop, let me just intercept you a little bit. Uh, are you saying their actions is illegal? Because uh, my guess here, they are talking to a foreign nations, and discussions are held at the highest level, and they arrive at the understanding to a lateral level. Uh, it's going to go like in a battle system. We are giving you this, and you're going to give that in return. Uh, so what is the deal? <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. They they commit war crimes or crim crimes against all nations. Remember, this is what you don't know. The churches don't teach because they don't know. This is Babylon the Great. The United States of America is mm -hmm. called Babylon the Great in the Bible. Hmm. Okay. This is the greatest and most evil kingdom that ever existed. <laughs> Somebody listening out there will say, but wait a minute, how can the bishop say that yet? Uh, is it because of what we've seen happening today? Is that the only nation? You're looking at Russia, you're looking at China. Uh, people black death, uh, for example, as a result of this coronavirus, they were throwing people out of their homes and all of that. that I didn't see that happening in America. Oh, in America, we're dying. Our people are dying. Guess what? They shot at least five, shot and killed at least five black people within the last last few weeks. OK, mm -hmm. shot and killed. OK, no, we're not putting, being put out on the streets. But guess what they're also doing? They're giving us financial fines. They are arresting us. That's all on the news here in America. That's what they're doing to us. So many black people, we are forced to stay in our homes. When we go out, many of us are arrested. If we don't stand six feet apart from each other, we are arrested or fined. They give us a fine of like $400, $500. We got to pay back. U.S. So uh, is, it being a, well, is it a selective system? Is, are you saying there's a selective system? Oh, yes. Being so yes, because at the same time in America, white people are next to each other in the park and the police are giving them masks, water. You see that, but they're not doing that with black people. We're being said, we're being told, go inside, stand six feet apart from each other. But they're not doing that with white people. OK, now, China, listen, um, China was on an uprise. They, everybody thought China was going to be the second, the next world superpower. Mm -hmm. Babylon the Great had a plan. They weren't worried. Babylon said, no, they're not. Watch what we do to China. They sent that disease to China. China's jacked up now. All the nations want to sue China for the coronavirus. Meanwhile, America has the patent on the disease. You don't see how wicked this is? <laughs> so you're talking I about, you're talking you're about killing. Off, yeah, you're then talking. when you get jacked up and people now want to sue you, but meanwhile it was me. That's how they do. So you okay? Let's talk a little bit here. You talk about then shooting black, which of course is true. true. I I think two, three, four days ago there was this guy who went jogging, I believe, to get uh, some of his sweats and waist 
out and uh, the, this person was shot. But is that fair to say to just generalize that the blacks are they not committing crime as well, Bishop? Or are you uh, the ones that are yeah, making yeah, reference even to? If somebody, no. yeah, let me just get myself correct here. Even somebody committing crime does not warrant taking that person life. I think the person requires going through uh, the judiciary system. But what are some of the things that are they doing too that you want to speak about here? Are they just everything uh, right with the blacks? Is that what you want to tell us? Of course, it would be foolish of me to say everything is right. But the few cases I'm making reference to, for example, a young lady named Brianna Taylor. She is an EMT. She worked at two hospitals. This was last week. Um, the police broke down her door, uh, shot up the house, and they thought that um, she was a criminal they were looking for. Meanwhile, another unit had arrest already arrested the criminal they were looking for earlier that day. And they tried to keep it hush-hush secret. That's what they do. Okay? That's what they do in America. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, and it's good to have this sort of uh, open com conversation. Uh, the church community, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the activists, uh, and all of those that are involved in it, do you think, are you guys doing enough as well? Because if you look at places like Chicago and other places, uh, the blacks and themselves, they're killing one another. They are involved in different sort of things. That's not the uh, the argument here for government or security forces to do what they are doing. But are you guys also doing enough to create this sort of uh, awareness that, that, that the lives of these people to be changed? Yes, I'll, I'll say this. Israel United in Christ, what we teach is the same thing Jesus Christ taught. Mm. Number one, Jesus Christ said, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, according to Matthew 15, 24. Mm. The blacks throughout Africa and America and the Caribbean are scattered. We are all part of the 12 tribes of Israel. So what we are doing is teaching them they must keep God's commandments. Guess who one of our main enemies is, aside from the white man? I'm not talking about white people now. Guess who our main enemies are against keeping God's commandments? The black church. The church is evil. Let me explain what I mean when I say that. The church is the reason many blacks are committing crimes. They are teaching us God's laws are done away with. Just plead the blood of Jesus, and no matter what you do, you're okay with Jesus. So guess what poor black people would end up doing, especially mm -hmm. Chicago. And guess what? They're not bringing the drugs and the guns into Chicago. Who's allowing guns and drugs to get into Chicago? The government allows guns and drugs to get into Chicago. Now you give these guns and drugs to poor blacks. These poor blacks, which have very, few, very little jobs, no money, they say, hey, I need money to eat. Let me go out and rob somebody and steal so I can put food on my table. And then we go out and teach, hey, thou shall not steal. Thou shall not kill. Here comes the black minister. Hey, that's wrong. You're not supposed to teach God's commandments. Jesus is love and he's white. This is what they do. They are an enemy to the Bible. I'm going to say it again. The black church is an enemy to the Bible. You heard what I said, Alfonso? Yeah. Uh, if any black church listening to, uh, to what you are saying, is that something you think they want to believe? <laughs> it doesn't matter if they believe it or not. I'm telling you what it is. Remember when Christ taught. Who was the enemies of Christ aside from Rome? You had his own people, the scribes and the Pharisees, who were all black against Jesus Christ. Now, Alfonso, I know some of your listeners might be new. They might be saying, why does he keep saying Jesus is black? Why does... Well, that's not in the Bible. I have to read it. I almost, I have to. I almost ask you that because uh, he had uh, B is uh, a, a, a politician of the religion. We hope people have their comments on what they say so that we we'll make sure that we we'll get it out to our people. So uh, is that scripture, that your argument, what you're yes. saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, this is what I want all y'all to do come Sunday. When your listeners go to church, I want y'all to ask them, can you prove Jesus is a white man according to the Bible? You want a Bible verse that reads the description of Jesus. Did he have pink red skin, blue eyes, and long yellow stringy hair? Ask them for a Bible verse. Now let me read the color of Christ. 
Revelation chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 1, then I'm going to jump. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Let's jump down to verse uh, 14 and 15, describes him. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Wool, let's think of the word wool. Wool is a texture. I'm going to say it again. White is a color, but wool is a texture. Who has a wool texture hair? Black people. There's only two textures of hair in the earth. You have thin straight hair or Afro wool hair. Those are the only two hair types in the earth. Let's read it again. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. When it says his eyes were as a flame of fire, Alfonso, when you read Genesis 49 and verse 12, it says the Messiah's eyes shall be red with wine because Christ's first miracle was what? He turned water into wine. In the book of Matthew, they call Christ a wine bibber because he drank wine in moderation quite often. Now let's go down to his color in verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass. Brass is brown, but watch this. And his feet like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So Jesus Christ looked so dark, he looked like he was burned in a furnace. So it's describing the color of his feet and the texture of his hair. Okay? Now, is that the only verse I can go to, Alfonso? No. Watch this. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel saw a vision of Christ. Verse 6. His body also was like the barrel, meaning green, green garment, and his face as the appearance of lightning. He had a glow on his face. Then it says, and his eyes as lamps of fire. He drank wine in moderation. That's what made his eyes red. Watch this. And his arms and his feet, like in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words, like the voice of a multitude. Polished brass is brass burned in a furnace. If you burn anything, Alfonso, in a furnace, it gets black. Black, black, black. That's the color. If you burn white rice, let's get, let's get, I'm going to give you a childish example. If you burn white rice in a furnace, it turns black. OK, so the description of Jesus is in the Bible, but colonialism taught us not to teach us. Colonialism taught us teach. Why? Jesus is white. Why? Why? Why do you think they are doing that? Is there any reason? Yes, they have hatred for the true sons and daughters of God, which is you and I, our people. They hate us with a passion in order to enslave us and to colonize, colonize us, Alfonso. They had to indoctrinate us with lies. This is why when I was in Sierra Leone last year, Alfonso, the literacy rate, the literacy rate there is almost like 40%. A lot of people we met on the street could not read. So they would say to us, can you just read it to me so I can hear it and make a decision for myself? Because a lot of people in Sierra Leone could not read. And remember, you were sent back there in Sierra Leone, back when? It was like the 1800s, something like that. I forgot the, oh, 1792. Okay, so you mean from 1792, the literacy rate in Sierra Leone has only risen to 40%? The white man's doing some evil out there. The white man is doing much evil in Sierra Leone. Are the blacks The diamond capital the, of the world. The blacks, are the blacks too, are they doing evil there as well? Yes. Yes, Alfonso, let me say this. In the Bible, we all have a biblical name. The people of Sierra Leone, scattered throughout Africa, the Americas and the Caribbean. Our biblical name, listen good, mm -hmm. is the 12 tribes of Israel. Now the white man, what is his biblical identity in the Bible? Esau, Edom. Esau is E S A U. Edom is E-D-O-M. That is the wicked face. I'm going to read it because I know you don't believe me. I'm going to read it right now. I want everybody to get your Bibles. If you can read, get your Bibles 
and follow along. If you can't read, you know, I got to come out there and help the people. I got to set something up out there, Alfonso, so that people can learn to read. This seems, your ministry or this church seems to be on a crusade for with, with eye openings to dig out those things that people talk about, perhaps ordinary churches and people are not telling people. That seems to be the mission from what I'm hearing from you so far. Yes, sir. We have, Christ said, you shall know the truth, John 8, 32. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The reason we are not set free as a people yet the reason why we're still colonized and enslaved is because we have not learned the truth of the Bible yet. We've learned nothing but colonial lies. Watch this, Alfonso. Malachi chapter 1, verse, I'm going to start at 2. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau. Wait a minute. The church taught us during colonial times, even until today, God does not hate anybody. Now we're reading God hates Esau. So the churches give lie after lie after lie. Let's read on. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we, will, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Edom returned during the Renaissance era. That's when they built up the their okay. cities throughout Europe and America. Mm -hmm. They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them, which is Edom, the border of wickedness, the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. See, the Bible says Esau and Edom is the border of wickedness, and God has indignation against them forever. You can't change that because you don't like it. We have to accept what the Bible says. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how do you see your message out there, that the follower or people of this church here? Do you think uh, ordinary or other churches are doing it differently? Is that part of the problem we are having in society today? The problem with these churches today, remember, in order to become a pastor, you have to go to uh, an official pastor. You have to go to the white man's theology schools. They have a system set up wherein you have to teach what they tell you to teach, which is nothing but lies. So you're going to teach lies and then you get funded by America or Europe or whoever, whatever white institution backs you. So in other words, these systems are set up I to also to initiate people to uh, make sure because it, it places, uh, in my own view, it's something like it places restrictions so that, hey, this is the way you go. So why you didn't go through that way? Did you go through the, uh, the white schools uh, to, uh, to be pastor or the black school? <laughs> I went through God's school. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit came yeah, yeah. on me and many other there brothers, must, my teachers, there must and be a, showed us there must be what the over, Bible's really saying. Yeah, be sure there must be an overseer. That's what yes. I want to know. Is that a white or black person? Black, of course. Black. The white man's not going to tell us the truth, Alfonso. Remember, they raped us. They rob us. To this day, they steal your diamonds from Sierra Leone and give you foreign aid as a loan, and you got to pay it back. And you have no power, no voice against it. Your churches don't speak against it. Your leaders don't speak against it. Why? <laughs> Fear of the white man. Fear of Babylon the Great. Fear. Hey, Alfonso, watch this. I may, I may make, you may hear me say the white man is the devil, right? You might hear me say that. Mm -hmm. But I get it from the Bible. Watch what it says in Revelation 2, verse 9. Listen good. This is Jesus Christ speaking. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Who's in Israel saying that they're the Jews? Alfonso, the white man. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just say it for you because I know you, you're a public figure. You might not be able to say what I say, so I'll say it. No. It's the white man who has taken, colonized Israel and called themselves Jewish people that Christ says they are the synagogue of Satan. They are Antichrist. They are the 666. They are Lucifer. Hmm. Mm-hmm. 
when you preach this no. yet, how, what is the reception to you? Are people seeing you somebody who is unearthing to, or to unearth or bringing the truth to them? So they are, are they still apprehension to what you preach? Well, many people are appre not many. I'll say this. Some people are apprehensive because, like yourself and your listeners, you have been indoctrinated. If Let's say if you're 40 years old. You have 40 years of lies in your brain. Now you hear it for the first time. The only thing that can break through the white man's spell of lies is the Bible. You must humble yourself to the words of the Bible so that it can break the spell of colonialism on your brain, on your mind. Do you believe the Bible? Of oh, 100%. You live by the Bible? Oh, yes, I do. Do you fall short at times? If, all men, if I said no, I would be a liar. All men fall short of the glory of God. <laughs> and have you have you admitted of your falling short to your congregations uh, in the, in an honest fashion, believing in the work of God uh, that you are preaching the word of God? Do you come uh, admit it to your congregations or to your people? Of course. That you are in the ministry? Of course, of course. There's a in Proverbs it even says the thought of foolishness is sin. Do I have foolish thoughts at times? Yes. I'll give you a foolish thought. A foolish thought is that the white man can be saved. That's a foolish thought. That's sin, because that ain't happening. And another foolish thought is that uh, when it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, mm -hmm. that, that means everybody on the planet Earth can be saved. That's not true. <laughs> what, is, what is the truth then? <laughs> the truth is, like Christ said in Matthew 15, let me show you, let me show you. This is what you got to do, Alfonso, you and your listeners. Mm -hmm. You must compare scripture to scripture. If something seems to be contradictory, then that means you have been taught wrong. I'm going to give you an example. Watch this. Matthew 1, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. You see the word that says his people, right, Alfonso? Mm -hmm. His people, right? Yeah. Then watch this, Matthew 15. I'm just jumping a few chapters over. Matthew 15, 24. It reads, I am not sent, it says, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? Watch this. Let's go to Luke. I'm going to show you. I'm just giving you a few examples. Luke chapter 1. Watch what it says. Luke 1, I'm going to start at verse 68. It reads, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So God is going to save the Israelites from the hand of their enemies, from the hand of all that hate them. What do now you watch consider, this. Who do church. you consider our enemies? Uh, oh, you want to know who our enemies are? Who, yeah, who are those? On, who do you consider as the enemies? Oh, 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 I might have a foolish thought and say, black people is my enemy. That's a foolish thought. Let me show you what the Bible says who our enemies are. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48. I want all your listeners to follow along with me. This is what Moses told the 12 tribes of Israel in Egypt. In Africa, if you break God's laws, these are the curses that shall come upon you. Verse 48. Therefore shall you serve your enemies, which the Lord will send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he have destroyed thee. So it's telling us you would have to depend on your enemy for finances, food and clothing, and your enemies would put yokes of iron on your neck. Watch verse 68, Alfonso. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt means slavery. I'm going to read it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you, which means save you. So now, Alfonso, you got to think. It says your enemies would put yokes of iron on your neck. 
Your enemies would sell you into slavery. Your enemies would put you on ships. Wait a minute. The Dutch did that to us. The Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, America, Europe, Germany. These are the ones, this is the race who enslaved us. The Bible says they are your enemies. But the churches don't teach that, Alfonso. Do, do you the still, churches say, no, still, they're Bishop, your friends. Bishop, do you still consider them as your enemy? Oh, yes. The white man is so, the enemies of our race. So then why is the forgiveness part of the Bible say that we should forgive, repent, and for they do, for they do not know to what they are doing? Are we doing enough to, the, to convert them to change their behavior? Or you don't forgive? Okay. Let's give you some history now. Quick history one-on-one. There's two references. Let me show you this. Uh, let me go to Exodus 23. I'm going to be quick. Exodus 23. Watch this. Verse 4. This is when we were making our exodus from Egypt. We were going up to the land of Canaan, which is still Africa. Watch this. Exodus 23, verse 4. If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him. If thou see the ass, the, the word ass means donkey. If thou see the ass of him that hates thee lying under his burden, thou and wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help him. Now let's jump. So what enemy is that? Let's jump down to verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice, God's voice, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. And my angel shall go before you and bring thee unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Parasites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. So there's two groups of enemies in Exodus 23. The first group in verse 4 where God says, help your enemies, that's the enemies of your people. Let's say me and you don't like each other, Alfonso. Mm -hmm. You're my enemy. The law says I must help you. But when you jump down to verse 23, when it mentions the other nations, God says, I will kill them. I will cut them off. So that's what the churches don't realize. There's two groups of enemies. One group is your own people. You might not like them. God says you must help them. Although you don't like them, you must love them. Then that's what Christ said um, in Matthew 5, 43. Love your enemies. Remember that? Mm -hmm. When he said that, that was based on Exodus 23, verse 4. Do you, Love your enemies. Do you, your live, do you live by that biblical quotation? Say it again. Do you live by that biblical quotation? Do you love your enemies? Oh, yes. Of my people, I love them very much. And so then what is the distinction I, of loving and, forg uh, and forgiving? There, there is no stink, distinction of loving and forgiving. You must forgive. Okay? Have mercy on the enemies. The enemies is talking about is our people, Alfonso. I'll give you an, another example. The Yoruba and the Igbo. These are the same people split into two different families, but they hate each other. Those are enemies, but they are brothers. They must love one another. Give you another example. The Haitian blacks, the Haitians have an animosity towards the Dominicans in Santo Domingo. They are brothers. They act like enemies, but they are brothers. We have to go and teach them. Do you Christ said, love your enemies. Who do you blame for that? You blame the whites as well? Oh, yes. They're instrumental in that. They pit one group against another. That's how, when you read and research the Berlin Conference of the late 1800s, Alfonso, they divided Africa up. The Portuguese, the Dutch, the French, the Spanish, the Euro uh, uh, Germany, France. And then they pit groups against each other, like the Civil War in uh, Liberia. Mm. They pit one group of blacks against another. That's what they, they the white man is famous for doing that. And we have not listened, we have not, if we could just humble to what the Bible says, Alfonso, we can unite. Watch this. So far. You've never heard this, Alfonso. So I, I got to bear, I got to, I got to bear with you. Watch this. Your listeners too. I'm going to show you a mystery in the Bible. I, you, I, you see how I really people hold the Bible, really we hate each other. Mm -hmm. Alfonso, you heard what I said? Yeah. You see how black people are all divided against one another, even in America. Watch what the Bible says about that. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. It says, gather yourselves. Zep Zephaniah 2, verse 1. Let me make sure I got it right. Yes. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Who is the nation not desired? 
You blacks that went into slavery, you blacks that are colonized, you're the nation not desired. What does God command us to do? Gather together, solidarity, unite as one race of people because we are one race. But you know who you want to unite with? You know who black people in Sierra Leone want to unite with? Their slave master. You want to unite with the white man that robs you, raped your foremothers, stole you from your country. You want to unite with the devil, but you don't want to unite with your God, brothers, and sisters. What is the reason for That's that? What is the reason for that, Bishop? We, our people, have been taught to hate the laws of God. We have been indoctrinated in heresy, seditions against God's law by the white man. He taught us that, for example, Christmas. But even you if they told you, be sure not to interrupt you. Even if they told you that you have the option to also reject it, people should be able to look between the lines to see what is wrong and what is good to make an informed decision. Oh, I'll give you an example in Sierra Leone. I was there for, for a month. And I would, we held up the white image of Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And we would ask the people of Sierra Leone, who is this? They all would say, Jesus. And we would ask them, can you give a Bible reference, a chapter and verse? They'd say, no. So then we'll read Revelation chapter one. His hair was white like wool. His feet like they burn in a fire. Some understood what the Bible was saying and said, hey, I never knew that was in the Bible. I believe what the Bible says. But the vast majority says, although the Bible says he's black and describes him as black, we won't believe it because we love a white Jesus. That's the Sierra Leone. Wow. Well, folks, uh, and we have the video footage on it. If you go to our, our YouTube page, IUIC Sierra Leone, you can see the videos for yourself with your people rejecting the Bible description of Jesus and only accepting the white image. That's not in the Bible. So you blame the whites for that? Yes, they've been indoctrinated. And we accept it, but we have our own people that are also preaching the message of these very white people that we are talking about. And some are from in the blacks community as well. Yes, you have to get them out. <laughs> how, how do we get them out? Hey, Hey, how is, how is China getting you out in China? They're throwing you out of their homes, right? Mm -hmm. In Kuwait, I just put a video. They're kicking, Arabs are kicking blacks in Kuwait out of their homes. In Kuwait, too. So now, why are black people confused in Sierra Leone? How do we do it? What do we do? How come all nations know what to do against us, but we don't know what to do against them? We let them smack us upside the head, kick us, take our sisters from us. We got to wake up, black man. Wake up. Get, get some spiritual strength. We, you need the Holy Ghost on you. That's do, what you need in Sierra Leone. The Holy Spirit. Do we, <laughs> do we see that coming? So, do we see that coming uh, in the soonest time, Bishop? Oh, yes. Oh, you're going to see it. As black men, like I put a video up yesterday on my events channel, IUIC Events. Mm -hmm. I show you the evil that they're doing to us in America. I showed that white man's doing to us in America, killing us. I showed the evil of the Chinese beating us in China and beating us in America. And I show you the evil that the Arabs are doing to us in Arabia, in Kuwait, kicking us out of our homes and beating us. We must unite as one. Zephaniah two and one, we must unite. Watch this. You know what your Christians are gonna say? It doesn't say that in the New Testament. Yes, it does. In the book of Ephesians, watch this. I'm going to show you something that you don't know about unity, solidarity. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. It's, I'll start it. It says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body, that means one nation, and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. You see unity all through this chapter, but why do you get all these different religions out here? Because we've been divided up by colonialists, white colonialists, Arab colonialists, Chinese colonialists. They have divided us up so that we can never unite as one so mighty if, race. If these people are successful to come together, Bishop, why can't we come together as black? Because when you read, watch this, 
I'm a, so I got to give you scripture so y'all know what I'm saying is and based on Bible. That's what I'm taking <laughs> note. And I love what you are doing because I'm gonna I'm gonna go to also fact check this uh, uh, scripture, this quotation that you are giving, and that will be an eye opening for me as well. Yes, watch this. I'm a, I'm a reference Psalms 83, and I'm gonna start at verse two. I'm gonna read two to four. It reads, "For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head." They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? Our people. It's hidden that we're the 12 tribes of Israel. Nobody knows that. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So not only did they divide us up during the time of slavery, they call a group there Sierra Leoneans, right? The group that, that remained behind, they call us African-American. The other group they took from Africa, they call Haitians. Another group they call Jamaicans, Trinidadians. Another group they call Afro-Iraqis that you, they put in, in you Iraq. See, you see that as a stigma. You see that as a label. To, uh, that's part of uh, the uh, strategy to divide people. So that's how they decide to place them in category. Is that how you believe Yes, that? that's the crafty council. Yes. And not only that, then once they did that, they gave us religions. Baptist religion, Jehovah Witness religion, Seventh-day Adventist religion, Episcopalian. So now we're divided up in different religions. Then guess what us they gave us? Politics. They gave us various political groups that cause us always to fight against each other. This is crafty counsel. We must return to the truth with the Israelites. We must return to the Holy Bible. This is our book. This is our constitution. Our forefathers wrote this through inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We must return to it. Hmm. How soon is this going to happen? That's the million dollar question. Uh, how can we return to the? Who's going to champion that call? Who's going to lead the pathway to return to that, uh, that path? Hey, we're doing it now. We're doing it now, Alfonso. The men that we have set up in Sierra Leone, we established a church in Sierra Leone two, two years, in 2017. Those men are on the streets teaching. Those men are doing radio shows. In Nigeria, those men are on the streets teaching, just as I do. Those men are on radio shows, TV shows. The word must go out. The ones, our people in Liberia, they're waking up. Okay? We're waking up worldwide. Worldwide. Um, it, se it seems politics is also incited in that the process of teaching. That seems so. That's what I try to sense out as we talk now. Politics is also part of that? When I say politics, I want you all to understand what I'm saying. I'm making reference to God's laws. He has given us moral law, civil law, and ceremonial law. Okay? We cannot disregard that because the fabric of all societies are based upon God's laws mm -hmm. about not killing, not stealing, and the judgments for stealing, the judgments for killing. It comes from the Bible. These nations didn't make these things up. They got it from our book. OK. But these political groups, Alfonso, we must separate from that. All political groups fall underneath the white establishment. Esau, Edom, we must separate from that. The po making reference to the political groups, uh, are they helping or are they hurting the system? They are hurting the system. The political groups do the bidding of um, Europeans, for example. Um, you heard of Thomas Sankara, right? Thomas Sankara? Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso? Yes, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Remember what he did when he, he wanted to change all of, he, he changed the name from, from the Vulgate, upper or lower Vulgate, yeah. to Burkina Faso. He got all white people out. He said, we don't need foreign aid from America. We don't need help from these Europeans. We can do it ourselves. Africa is rich enough to unite itself and be self-sufficient. What did the white man do? Paid his best friend a million dollars to murder Thomas Sankara. Every coup that is established throughout Africa has been fortified and manipulated by either France or America or England. They are always behind the coups in Africa, always. Now, I know a lot of people, watch what I'm about to say, it's going to be controversial. A lot of people don't like Idi Amin. You remember him? Mm -hmm. Of Uganda. Right. He, they called him the Butcher of Uganda. One thing he said, just one, I'm just going by one thing he said. One thing he said, we must get all the Asians out of Uganda. 
He said, we can build Uganda ourselves. Get them out. And everybody was turning on him. Okay? You support and there are many you other support, leaders. You support his cause? Huh? Do you support his cause? Only when he said Africa must be able to be self-sufficient. That's what I'm saying. That's what I say. <laughs> Even Kwame Nkrumah. Remember, he didn't want Europeans help at first. He wanted to build dams and things himself. But the way this system is set up, you need white folks. And then the leaders that are put in place support so, America. The so, leaders they put in place support England, support so, Britain. Yeah, it, it seems to me now, the system here now, that I'm just going on top of my head, it seems to be a system of the rock of Gibraltar that is so solid now that we're finding it very difficult to penetrate that system. Yes, it is. And we cannot penetrate it. All we can do is return to the truth. And believe me, the Bible says we're going to be set free. Christ will come redeem us and we are going to become the mightiest nation on the earth, Alfonso. We must believe the Bible. What it takes for people to believe the Bible, Bisha? Well, well, I'll tell you now. With this plague that the white man's sending out, when Jeremiah 28 verse 8 prophesied about pestilence, when Matthew 24 verse 7 prophesied about pestilence, you better believe this Bible. You better come back because everything this Bible says is coming to pass. It's so, happening. Okay. We're living it. Okay. If, whatever the Bible says, and you are making a reference, and that's what I like about you because uh, whatever you say is you go back to the scripture to uh, to reveal it to us, uh, to make us to understand it's not just only a creation or imagination, imaginary thing, but it's also scripture. So then why are you holding the white responsible of this virus that they are killing the blacks? You remember you gave a quotations in the Bible, to, right? And that seems yes. to be, and all of these revelations, those were things that were said in the Bible long time. He said there will be a nations against nations, and it's unusual to things will be happening. Brothers and sisters will go against one another. The Bible gave us that hint. So why not shift this whole gear to be shot on, on this uh, specific group of people? <laughs> Remember from the Bible, there's always been, God always made a chosen, chose a chosen people. He hasn't changed. The Israelites have always been God's chosen people. Yes, he created all nations on the earth, but we, Alfonso, we are the chosen people of God. We are the, see, the white man taught us that we were nothing but low life, niggas, spicks, Gentiles. Now we're finding out that the white man has lied to us, that we are the 12 tribes of Israel. We are God's chosen people. People, okay, we must come back together. We must get rid of all colonial lies. All the colonial lies must be discarded, must be cast away. Is there a crusade or is there a mission to your church as a bicon to, to change what is happening in today's world to know the truth in your belief that people have maybe ignored the Bible and to go back to the scripture to believe and do what the Bible says? Is there a mission that you have embarked on? Yes, let me show you what Christ said in Matthew 28. Now, colonialism taught us the wrong understanding of Matthew 28. Watch this verse. Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. Amen. So when Christ said, teach all nations, colonialism said, see, the Bible is for everybody, everybody. But no, watch this. I'm going to show you what Christ meant. Deuteronomy 24, watch this. Pay close attention. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 4, verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. So God prophesied the 12 tribes would be scattered. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Pay close attention. And the Lord shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there you shall serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. <clears throat> so now we understand why Jesus Christ said, go and teach all nations. Because the Israelites, Alfonso, were scattered into all nations. I'll give you a brief example. We are a forgotten people even to ourselves. If you go into the churches of today, Alfonso, nobody talks about the slave trade. 
the slave trade, Alfonso, they took us from West Africa, right? West Africa. They sent us to West and South. They took us to America, Europe, the Caribbean island. You're familiar with that history, right? Right. But nobody talks about the sub-Saharan slave trade or the East African slave trade, where they took us from Ethiopia, Kenya, Mozambique, uh, Tanz Tanzania, uh, Madagascar, and they took us to India. They took us to Pakistan. They took us to Iran. They took us to Sri Lanka. They scattered us worldwide. That's what Jesus was talking about. Solidarity, unity, coming back together as one with one aim, one Lord, one mission. That's what we must do. Wow. So, uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, I know time has got to catch up with us yet, and I want to be here in, a, in here for a long while, a long while. Uh, every Wednesday we're going to be here. Uh, this is the first editions of The Truth Shall Set Them Free. I want to be free. The world want to be free, but we also need to be told the right truth. So we're going to be talking all of some of these high call issues here, and in a long while, uh, we're going to be getting some phone calls here. That's what we do on uh, like Barrier Public Radio. But let's just go back to where we started from here. I I just want to double check. I just want to make sure that uh, we are on course. And not to leave my most important, my obligation is with the audience. People that follow us on Facebook and via YouTube. Bishop, do you strongly still believe this virus is something that has been initiated and in targeting the black people? That seems to be the language I'm getting. Perhaps it's just passing through, but I just want to make sure that we are, are on point with that. Do you still believe the why the, the dying of the black? Uh, it is the effort. Uh, so how? Again, what the white man does, he spends mil billions of dollars on research. Uh, what they do, listen to what I'm about to say. I want all of you to, you can Google this on your own. Uh, Zoonosis. Z-O-O-N-O-S-I-S. Zoonosis. Mm -hmm. It explains how the white man takes human DNA and splices it with animal DNA, creating viruses. The Ebola virus was human DNA mixed with chimpanzee DNA, and they sent it out throughout the Congo. Hmm. Uh, COVID nineteen. The white is, man. The white um, man does that. Yes, the white man's doing that. It explains it. Just look it up. Zoonosis. Go all the way. Read it and go all the way down. They show you all these recent diseases was created by the white man in their laboratories. That's what they, they are the devil the Bible speaks of. I'm not saying it just because I'm saying it. I'm saying it because the Bible says it. And now I can see with my eyes what they're doing. <laughs> wow. Well, S103, uh, which is a gnosis, and uh, people are taking note here, and I'm going to go. Uh, every Wednesday, we set up to be here at, uh, on this network, correct, Bishop? Every Wednesday, yes, moving, yes, sir. moving forward. Okay. Yes. Well, all right. Uh, the old man time must catch up with us yet, and uh, we don't want, we can't empty all here, but it's quite interesting and fascinating uh, to see where we are. Um, what is the way out for this? Do you know? You said, what is the way out? Yeah. The way out is repentance. And when the, let me give you a scripture. I'm going to give you a Bible verse. I know the Christians don't know this. So I'm going to help the Christians out too. It seems Matthew Bible, 19. It seems the Bible sleeps over your head. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Eternal life, let me explain that, is world dominion. Eternal life is world dominion, living forever. In your kingdom, you making the rules. That's eternal life. Watch what he says. Verse 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Do you hear what Jesus said? Keep the commandments. No Christian wants to keep the commandments, Alfonso. They say, no, we're not going to keep the commandments. We don't want to keep the commandments. We must keep the commandments for eternal life, for salvation, for world dominance. 
Is there any reason do you still hold the whites responsible for people not keeping the commandments? Oh, yes. The white man set up all these evil churches. The white man set his image up as Jesus. The white man set his images up as God and the angels. The white man even put his own people in Israel in 1948 as us, as the Israelites. The white man is anti-Christ. Anti-Christ. Wow. Well, the truth shall set them free with Bishop Tanataya right here it's on the Liberal Public Radio. It's, we're going to be here every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the meanwhile. If there will be any changes in time in terms of schedule, too, we'll let you know. But in the meanwhile, we're going to be here to, uh, to get more teaching, to get uh, uh, the in-depth. Uh, it seems to be there are some others here to, uh, performing surgical operations on the scripture. In the scripture, they are not telling us all of this in-depth of the scripture that we need to know, Bishop. I'm hearing some yes. real strange things here. So it looks like you st you go through the scripture step by step to reveal some of the things that we do not know we are hearing now. Well, the, the truth shall set you free. To, uh, it will be here at every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on the Liberia Public Radio. And uh, in subsequent time to come, I guess you're going to be taking questions, right? Because we always like to engage with our audience to also act their question. And to let you know in advance, no questions is silly on this network. We allow people to express their views, their opinions. We do not sanction people. However, views and opinions expressed on our Facebook view is not the view of the management and staff of the Liberia Public Radio. How can you watch your departing statement here this afternoon? Say that last part again. What, what is your departing statement here this afternoon? I, I know it after once, and we do not want to keep you all here at the time yet, unless you oh, have okay. a few minutes with you. That's okay, because I've seen the fire is burning out on our Facebook. You yeah. hear reactions coming, but I know that there are a lot on the plate too you have to do, so we want to keep within the time frame by to make sure that that's part of, that's part of our, I, I think, that, yeah, we need, we need to be committed. Uh, we need to be sincere. We need to be honest. And part of that is to keep in with our time frame, correct? The time allotted. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what, what's the message I, you're leaving with us here this uh, the, for this weekend until we can be back here on Wednesday? The message is, do your research, please. Go to the scriptures I gave each of you. You can go. We are on YouTube, IUIC Liberia, IUIC Sierra Leone. Go to our Facebook pages. Research, check out what we're saying, what we're teaching, and examine it for yourself. You're going to find out we're telling you the truth. Okay, that's why another scripture Christ said, In the last days, you will hear a thing, and if a man told you, you wouldn't believe it. So, we're telling you now, you're the 12 tribes of Israel, you are part of that great nation. We are. Wow. Okay, well, uh, folks, we want to thank you very much uh, in today's editions of. Uh, uh, the truth shall tell, uh, shall set you free. Uh, we'll be coming your way live here at, uh, every Wednesday at, um, by the diaspora leading to, uh, internet giant station, to Liberia Public Radio, LPR TV. I am Afonso Zianso right here. We say have a pleasant, pleasant and next week. I believe you're going to be a firewall. Can we get a test or gist of what we're going to be talking about next week? Or are you just saying that uh, let's leave them hanging? We want them to come here so they will listen and hear what we're going to say. So, <laughs> We're gonna leave it. So, well, uh, okay. Bishop, thank you, thank you so much for your time and uh, these references. And I see uh, my guests, your members, uh, church, yeah, they are firing up. I'm seeing the fire, the crowns, brandings on our Facebook few year. It is amazing. We want to, we want to see how this thing gonna end. How oh, long? Crazy. How long here? You know, when you people in the media too, they are talking never stop. How long can you continue this? Until the Lord takes me home. <laughs> so, so meaning until, you are, until, it means you are in it for a long haul. Yes, right. Till death. A minute till death. Wow. Okay. All right, Bishop. Thank you so much, and have a pleasant, pleasant Wednesday. Please you be too, safe with your wife so and your entire congregation. And I will see you here next Wednesday in another time, open discussion to talk on national issues as well. Yes, sir. All praises. Love you all. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. 
Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.